This is just an excerpt from a full episode. If you enjoyed what you hear here, go check out other full episodes, either on YouTube or as part of the podcast feed. Enjoy. Moving on, train news now to Melbourne, the generally quite nerdy child who has really been acting out recently. Signs of bad behaviour have including hiding in its room, mild flirtation with decayed ships, and some mild corruption. As a cleaning company pay $1.3 million a month, or roughly one thirtieth of an airport land deal a month, to sanitise trains, cut corners, while allegedly paying off public officials, potentially exposing Melbourne commuters to coronavirus at the height of the pandemic. It's pretty amazing that this has been kept on the down low, to be honest. Given the near media blackout, I'm starting to reconsider these accusations of living in a dictatorship. But hey, the question is, what are they covering up? Well, allegations were heard by an independent board-based anti-corruption commission inquiry into alleged serious corruption inside Melbourne's railways. And not your standard railway corruption like bank robbers on horses or tying maidens to the tracks. No, no, no. This is a much less cinematic corruption. Testimony was heard that V-Line chief executive and man who looks exactly like a man who would be caught stealing government money, James Pinder, pocketed monthly payments from cleaning company TransClean along with $320,000 in funds which were spent on his $2.5 million home. The board of Victoria's regional rail operator V-Line has sacked Pinder and Metro Trains has sacked its operational fleet manager and your boss coming back on the first day after his much needed holiday, Peter Bolas. After the inquiry heard, the pair saw the pandemic as an opportunity to make some money. Hey baby, it's pandemic. It's basically the purge for financial crime. Isn't that right, Bezos? Oh, and don't think we've forgotten about you, Jerry Harvey. The men devised a plan to be paid $50,000 in bonuses by TransClean. In addition, Bolas and Pinder were accepting monthly payments of between $8,000 and $10,000, with Bolas pocketing up to $150,000 in exchange for promoting TransClean's interest at Metro. Those interests mostly include covering up a worker's death and injuries, including a TransClean cleaner who fell under a train in Cheltenham, while a separate incident saw a cleaner nearly electrocuted, covering up safety breaches, pretending to be gangsters, and not understanding how to hide a conspiracy. It's a mixed bag of interests to be sure, but you don't want to be the person at the party who can only talk about one subject ad nauseum. All this occurred even though Bolas knew as early as April that TransClean was failing to disinfect the trains during the pandemic, which carried many essential workers. And that was just during the pandemic, but they'd been covering up these, mis these mistakes for more than three years, even tipping off the company about an upcoming surprise audit, fundamentally undermining the most important element that is, the element of surprise. And then arranged for problematic documents to be removed. Those documents not only showed the corrupt behaviour, but photos were found of the documents in question in blackface when they were younger, which is very problematic. Taxpayers paid TransClean $1.3 a month for extra COVID-19 cleaning on suburban trains, on top of the company's contract worth up to $40 million at V-Line and $5 million at Metro. Bolas told TransClean's boss to make up a name of a cleaning chemical that he would use during the COVID-19 pandemic, saying, make shit up George, yeah? which for $1.3 billion a month is the only time an improviser has ever been paid. 
It's alright, 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 alright. Give me a location, give me a location, give me a location, and a deadly disease. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Bala said he had a meeting and he needed the name of a chemical that would be used as no one here has got no fucking idea and they're ringing me to ring you. We need a chemical name, so find out what the spray is. Suggesting Mortine and Glen 20 on various occasions. So on the plus side, the trains are currently free from the menace of Louis the Fly. Or at least we think so, because remember, Louis the Fly always seems to escape at the end of the ad. At least there is a better chance of being rid of flies because they certainly won't be free of COVID as it was revealed on the call played at IBAC that Bolas talked about a commuter suspected to be COVID positive who rode the trains for two weeks. And yet still, no reporting from Murdoch news outlets appropriately pointing out the horrid behaviour. Seems they're all tuckered out after their big tantrum about Dan Andrews and they need to have a little nappy web. Trans Clean's boss, George Haritos, admitted in intercepted phone conversations with Bolas, which were played at the hearings, that the cleaning on Metro's train was deficient. Where Bolas got to do the one thing we'd all like to do to Haritos. Yell at him. In a befuddled anger, he yelled, The state is paying you more now to do more work which you're not doing. They didn't even fucking spray the train. George Haritos had the audacity to front the hearings where he admitted to having a strong friendship with Mr. Pinder, whom he paid cash which he claimed was the winnings of successful horse racing bets. Haritos claimed he bet money from a shared kitty with Mr. Pinder, winning about two quadrillas a month and handing the proceeds to Mr. Pinder in cash. A pretty incredible claim given on a typical weekend, barring scratches, there are approximately 30,000 to 50,000 possible winning combinations. Now. If, like me, you need a primer on why this is an outrageous claim, well, here is the example given by Village Bet. On the weekend of the 25th of May 2019, the Quadrella legs at Randwick had 15, 13, 13 and 17 runners respectively after scratchings. The chances, therefore, of selecting the Quadrella with a single combination were 1 in 15 times 13 times 13 times 17, equaling 43,095. That's a 1 in 43,095 chance that you have the correct numbers. Here's another example. At Flemington, the chances were 1 in 14 times 10 times 18 times 15, coming to 37,800. A 1 in 37,800 chance of selecting the correct numbers. Making the regular odds of success about 40,000 to 1, which supposedly they were nailing two times a month every month. And if they could do this every month, why do they even have jobs? Just go on the professional gambling circuit. Would save you a lot of trouble with corruption charges. Pinder also claimed the money he received from Haritos was linked to a gambling syndicate with Haritos and Bolos. Pinder did admit he received cash from Haritos on at least one occasion the day that he was caught by IBAC with $10,000 stuffed in an envelope hidden behind his door insisting it was from the aforementioned syndicate. Unsurprisingly, the investigators did not take him at his word, seizing the burner phone and the $10,000 in cash given to him by Haritos. And they might have gotten away with it too, but Bolas has blown up the spot, denying knowing this syndicate exists and confessing that he was paid in exchange for furthering TransClean's business interests. Now where does that take us? Well, a current affair has gotten its hands on the story. 
and as atrocious as the behaviour of these corrupt heads of service are, what ACA are trying to get away with is even worse. Have a listen to this. He always calls it a sprinkle day. So this turn of phrase is, to them, the centre of the story. He's the CEO caught taking a sprinkle. Or was that hundreds and thousands? Hundreds and thousands are named that because of the seemingly uncountable nature of the small candies. And why, I'm to repeat, why are you obsessing on this? Even showing up at his house with a packet of donuts. Tried one last time with some incentives. We anticipated you might give us donuts, so we brought some donuts. And these will be your favourite because they've got sprinkles on them. And aside from the obsession with donuts in this report, they then reported on their website that the sack boss of Victoria's regional rail operator has declined to apologise to taxpayers after a corruption probe. Now, I am not a defender of Pinder. Not at all. He's done terrible things. But that is not at all what he said. Literally, all he has said is that he is not allowed to talk about it. Literally, he says, I'm not allowed to talk to anybody. You can see it in the footage right here. There's maybe an apology you'd like to express? I just can't talk to you guys. Though, he did say, I'm off to see the doctor. I'm not allowed to talk to anybody. Um, if, I, if I talk to you, I'll be breaking the law. Oh, now you're concerned with breaking the law? Seems a little late for that. But to be fair, the tolerable allowance for late arrivals to understanding the law when running a train network is roughly 80.6%, although they apparently thrive for 